Hi, Stephen Crivet here from New Energy Times. Thanks for joining me today. This is a six-part series about the conference presentation I gave on the Widom Larsen theory in 2023 in Poland. This is part five. Before the conference began, David Nagel, a retired physicist from the Naval Research Laboratory, contacted me about my planned lecture. Here's Nagel speaking in 2009. In fact, I will say ex-scientists, okay, who are bad-mouthing this field were, were once ordinary scientists. They looked at the data <laughs> and so forth, okay? But uh, now I call them ex-scientists because they're no longer looking at the data. Two years later, Nagel began publicly promoting the claims of Andrea Rossi, a man who has made a series of fraudulent Lenner claims. As everybody in the world, I knew about uh, the low nuclear uh, the, uh, um, uh, reactions uh, after the uh, famous presentation made by uh, Fleischmann and Pons. Uh, of course, I uh, have not been able to reproduce the effect that uh, they obtained in 1989. When did you give up attempting to, to replicate Fleischmann and Pons? Uh, after some month, because uh, after some month I, I, I made, it was very, very easy. Uh, that was an experiment that was very easy to reproduce because, you know, it was just an electrolysis. Before Lenners, Rossi was well known in northern Italy for making an energy claim that did nothing but pollute the ground with toxic waste. Rossi was charged criminally and served time in prison. Shortly after the ICCF 25 abstracts went online, Nagel sent me an email. He challenged me to provide rebuttals to two papers from researchers inside the field that had published comments about the widow larsen theory. Nagel wrote to me, quote, I note those papers now in this manner rather than by a comment after your presentation. The first paper was written by Ukrainian researcher Vladimir Vysotsky. It is different. Of course, it is different. <laughs> the second paper was written by Lenner theorist Peter Hagelstein, an associate professor of electrical engineering at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Interpolating. Uh, as I was banging my head against the wall, I read some papers. And... Neither paper had been published in a mainstream peer reviewed journal. I told Nagel that I did not plan to mention those papers during my presentation. Instead, I invited Nagel to make a comment after my presentation, and I would then address those papers. But Nagel said nothing after my lecture, so I'll address those two papers now. Vladimir Frasatsky has done impressive work in Leonard research, including his scientific publications with his Russian colleague, Ala Kornilova. They've shown credible experimental evidence for biological transmutations in Lenners. They've published a book on this. Vysotsky's also proposed his own theory to explain Lenners. There was just one problem with Vysotsky's critique. His main point was that the widom larsen theory didn't agree with the claims made by Andrea Rossi. Of course, the widom larsen theory didn't explain the fraudulent Rossi claims. So no, the Vysotsky paper had no relevance to the widom larsen theory. The other paper that Nagel had wanted me to discuss was written by Hagelstein, who has tried hundreds of theoretical models over the past three decades to explain Lenners. In 2005, National Public Radio journalist Bruce Gellerman spoke with Hagelstein. Today, because of his continued work on cold fusion, Peter Hagelstein lives a life of virtual academic exile at MIT. He lost funding for his lab, and he never did make full professor. Over the years, associate professor Hagelstein has come up with 150 versions of a theory, trying to explain how cold fusion could create a nuclear reaction at room temperature without high levels of fusion byproducts. Now, he thinks he has it. Widom and Larson, on the other hand, have proposed one and only one theory. They published their initial paper on the archive preprint server in 2005. Three years later, in January 2008, Hagelstein and his colleague Irfan Chaudhary published a critique about the widom larsen theory on archive. One month later, widom larsen and their colleague Yogendra Srivastava 
uploaded their response pointing out errors in the Hagelstein and Chaudhary paper. Five years went by. In 2013, Hagelstein alone criticized Whittem and Larson's theory again in a much longer paper published in the Cold Fusion Journal called Condensed Matter and Nuclear Science. When I visited Whittem earlier this year, I asked him about this. And was Hagelstein ever, a, 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 his criticism ever concerned to you? It's only my Uh As physics goes, no, never the slightest concern. All the criticism we got, never the slightest concern to me. Because I read it, I evaluated it, and I, and, uh, I answered it, I thought, adequately. And then I forgot it because there's no science. Now the thing is, uh, Hegelstein was never satisfied with that. So after I answered it, um, you had to write another one. In that same 2013 paper, Hegelstein acknowledged the success that Whittem and Larson had achieved. He wrote that Whittem Larson theory is the single most successful theoretical model that the field has seen since it started. Here are some of the positive responses to the Whittem Larson theory. And some more. And more. And more.